Hi, this is Nick at Atlantic Laser Scanning. Today we're going to take a look at a project that was scanned indoors using checkerboard targets. Because we've got a bit of an issue with our checkerboard target placement, we're going to take a quick look and see what that issue is. As you can see, we've got multiple checkerboard targets showing up uh, in each location. Uh, maybe our scan tech didn't really understand what the purpose of the target was, but uh, while you may think that this is going to increase your accuracy or your registration, actually it can cause problems. Uh, you want your targets, be it sphere targets or checkerboard targets, to be no closer than about 10 feet from each other. Uh, and as you can see, we are much closer than 10 feet which is going to cause an, an issue. I wouldn't look at the accuracy on something like this, even if it re registers correctly, uh, strictly using targets, uh, is uh, probably as accurate maybe as uh, if it was done correctly or as we're going to do, we're going to register this project without using the targets. So we can jump back into our initial screen and we're going to go through registration, skipping pre-processing and we are going to elect an automatic registration. Our default method of registration is top view and cloud to cloud, meaning it's going to spin each one of the scans uh, and look for similar geographies, walls, furniture, outlines uh, from the top down to initially set the scans and then try to tighten them up by looking for common XYZ points, which is what the cloud to cloud uh, registration method is. So we'll choose register and verify. Let's take a quick look at what we've got for our two clusters. So we'll assume that they are correct and look at them in our explore tab. Correspondence view. Many times we can see similarities in the structure of, uh, of our clusters and we can grab them manually and move them to where they need to be. 77 along with cluster 2, you can see by opening cluster 2 that it's made up of 75 and 76. So um, one thing we can do is grab 77. I prefer to go into the old user interface. If I grab 77, I can decrease the size of my tool. And we'll just try to slide this over on top of the existing scan here for the clusters. And we can then drag and drop that scan into the cluster itself, unlock it, and then we can run a update top view cloud to cloud. We'll try a top view uh, of just that cluster and see if we can get that to come together quickly. We did not get a successful registration, so what we can do is go into our Create Correspondent Split View tab. If you've never used this before, it's an excellent tool. Um, now, we've got two scans that are next to each other here, one being 76, drag and drop that in, the other being 77. We'll make sure that that's loaded and drag and drop that directly next to it. This allows us to look at the two scans side by side and look for similar walls, similar features that we can grab uh, correspondence features with and then force the correspondences.
All right, it looks as though this scaffolding here has been placed. You can see where there are the, uh, the glass doors uh, just beyond it that we see here. And it looks like that scan placement was uh, right over here in this corner. So uh, as we look around, uh, we can see that we've got many different surfaces that will correspond. So we're looking for a plane. First, we can mark this black wall here. We can also see the ceiling here, very clearly visible. It's important when you do this that you're trying to grab uh, planes that are uh, somewhere 45 degree angles of each other. Now we go into force correspondences. We'll say, we'll tell the computer that these two planes are the same and that these two planes here are the same. We can continue to do this. We'll give ourselves a much better chance of successful registration. As you can see with a couple of planes that we have instructed the software that are the same, it begins to see itself in space uh, for where it is. We'll go ahead and shut that down. It'll ask if it wants to be uh, forced the correspondence. We say yes. Now, in this cluster, we'll go back and update the scans in that cluster, but this time we do a cloud to cloud. If we use top down, it will not use those uh, walls and ceilings that we had instructed as correspondence views or correspondences together. So cloud to cloud is what we're gonna use and we'll watch it come together. As we can see now, we've got green lights. It has come together. We lock our cluster and we can take a look here at our other cluster. We can open them both up and see if they are similar in shape. Now they're very different. So if they do come together, one of the best ways to check this is going to be by going back into our uh, split view. And again, we pull the two scans that are closest to each other, which would be 74 and 75. Let's see if we have anything that shows similar characteristics. We've got a hallway. There we go. Once again, we can do the same thing as we did previously. We can pick out walls with our plane feature. And again, we need to pick out as many different angles as we can. All right, now we'll force our correspondence views here. Three and four. Almost all the rest of them have, well, they have. Everything has corresponded well. So we should be able to close this out. Forcing our correspondences. Now, when we go into the main scan manager up here, we update scans. We'll go cloud to cloud again and see it come together. And we've got uh, yellow light. Scan point tensions look pretty good. 
You can see where our hallway did come together. And now we've worked our way through a somewhat problematic scan project uh, that had scan targeting issues, as well as uh, a fairly odd shape. Uh, hallways are always uh, a bit more difficult, but uh, it is now together. And hopefully this will, get, will help you guys out on uh, some future projects that you run into the same sort of issue.